hey welcome back everyone today we are talking about how you can go ahead and actually solve your mock paper for the frm exam both for the frm part one and part two in the most effective way okay so in this video i'm going to give out one self assessment tool wherein you can go ahead and you can assess your own mock paper by yourself and i'm going to give out some tips that you can actually use not just on your mock paper but on your actual exam day as well so to begin with the self-assessment of your mock exam, I've got this table right here. I'm going to explain what it means, but this is something that you can actually draw on your own notebook as well, as well as if you want to, to do this on the Excel sheet, you can go ahead and you can do that as well. Okay. So starting with the very first thing is the question number. Now under this particular column, you have to write all the incorrect questions that you got on your mock exam. Okay. So for instance, if I got question number two as incorrect, then five, then seven, maybe eight, maybe nine, maybe 12, maybe 15, so on and so forth. I will write all the incorrect questions that I got on the mock exam. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to categorize each of these incorrect questions that I got into these three different categories right here. So under the mistakes column, essentially what we are doing is we are placing all the questions we got incorrect due to silly mistakes or any other mistakes. As an example, let's say that in, instead of using the correct discount rate, we actually used the risk free rate. So that's a silly mistake. Another example I can take is that let's say that rather than finding the answer for the most appropriate, you found the answer for the least appropriate. So that's again a silly mistake. Another example that we can take is that let's say that you were in a hurry and you incorrectly marked the incorrect answer choice. Okay. So that's again a silly mistake as well. well. I would like to give you one more example here. And that is, let's say that you were very confident about a particular question and you are sure that the answer choice has to be, let's say option D. But when you actually checked the solution, the answer was actually option A. Now, though this is not a silly mistake, but still it's a mistake, right? So again, we categorize in this particular column, moving on to not able to attempt. So under this column, all the questions that you were not able to attempt, maybe the question was lengthy. So you skipped it. Maybe time ran out and let's say that you left 10 questions because there was no time available. So at that point in time, you simply guessed what was the right answer, right? So all the questions that you were not able to attempt during your mock exam, all those questions will come here. Now, all the other questions that doesn't come in this particular category or this particular category will come under this others column right here. So hopefully you understand these three different categories that we have here. Now, what I'm going to do is that let's say I, I look at question number two, I will categorize whether it was a silly mistake. It was, I was not able to attempt or anything else. I'll put it here. So let's say the question number two, it was a silly mistake from my side. So I will go ahead and I'll place a tick right here. Then question number five, I was not able to attempt because time was running out and hence I just had to take a guess and I moved on. Seventh question was again, I was not able to attempt time was running out. Eighth question again was a silly mistake. Ninth question again was a mistake. I was in a hurry and I marked the wrong answer choice. Again, 12th question is something I had no clue about that particular subject. And that's why I place in others right here. 15th question again, it was a mistake. So now I will go ahead and I'll repeat this process for all the wrong questions that I have in these question number. So essentially what we are doing is that by creating this table, Okay. We are getting into the minute details of the mock evaluation process. Basically we are taking a micro level understanding of, of our mock exam. Okay. Now by just having a look here, I can see how I did in a particular exam and where I need to focus on. For example, if I see a lot of questions in, in the mistakes column here, I, I definitely need to work upon my accuracy. See on any exam, it is of utmost importance that we focus not just on speed, but also on the accuracy. So if I see a lot of questions in this particular column that definitely suggests I need to work upon the accuracy or let's say, for example, if I see a lot of questions on not able to attempt section right here, then that means that I need to work upon my speed. Why I was not able to attempt a lot of questions, why I had to take a lot of guess 
to answer a particular question so definitely this suggests that i need to go ahead and i need to increase my speed in the next mock exam or perhaps in the actual exam okay and if i see a lot of questions in this others i need to make sure that my concepts are clear maybe i need to go ahead and i need to revise so so on and so forth i can go ahead and by just having a visual look right here i can clearly have in in the back of my mind i can store this picture that in my last exam i was i was doing a lot of silly mistakes and this time i have to make sure that i commit less of mistakes on this particular exam similarly within just minutes i can go ahead and i can say that okay i need to work upon my mistakes so this is the entire purpose of this self assessment table that we have right here now this is an excel sheet that i've i have here and by just having a look here i can pretty much say that i was not able to attempt lot of questions maybe my speed was less time ran out i had to take a lot of guesses to complete the overall paper so this thing will actually give you a total visual look as to how you actually did on your mock exam okay so this is very important for self evaluation okay so now i'm going to give out some tips that can be useful not just for the mock exam but can be used even on the actual exam day so the very first thing we have is that do not get stuck on one particular question it's very important to solve the questions you know first guys garp will give out some difficult questions or perhaps lengthy questions as well that will consume most of your time and you will get caught up in those questions don't get stuck on one particular question and waste your precious time remember you have 4 hours to complete the entire exam so roughly around 2 and a half minutes to solve each question in part 1 exam so make smart choices on the exam solve two easy questions rather than solving one difficult question so that is a wise decision okay so you have to understand and you have to move on to the questions that you know and when you still have time then go ahead and solve the lengthy or perhaps the difficult question Now the second thing is that if you get a particular answer choice frequently don't be confused at that point in time let's take an example to understand that let's say that i have solved question number 1 to 5 and i got the answer choice as option a now i'm solving the sixth question and let's say that i'm confused between two options option a or option b now somewhere or the other in the back of my mind i will feel that okay it has to be option b because i already have five questions as option a right so the other one has to be a different one i will go ahead and i will think like that okay now let's take another example here question number 1 to 8 in all these questions i got answer as a now i'm solving the question number 9 i'm again confused between option a or b now my mind would actually believe that i've got so many a is here so ninth option definitely it will not be a i can go ahead and i can mark it as b right but this is absolutely wrong guys this is absolutely wrong understand that each question on the exam they are independent of each other just like we have in probability independent events similarly we have all the questions they are independent of each other if you are sure that the answer is a go ahead and mark it as a no matter what has been the previous option choices okay the third point is that let's say that you're solving the mock paper and if you're not able to solve difficult question then it's absolutely okay but on the other hand if you're not able to solve easy questions then i think it's a problem and this clearly suggests that you need to understand the material well clear your concepts and probably revise now this one is important you have to take the mock exam just like the exam day mock exams will basically act as a simulation of the actual exam day to have a proper simulation complete the entire mock paper at one go keep your cell phones away and just keep your calculator and scratch paper with yourself all right okay now this is very popular many candidates want to know is there any particular benchmark for how many questions to actually solve and get it correct well the standard benchmark has been over 70% and i feel that's very reasonable as well you should always keep your targets high right now let's say that if you aim to get only 50% of the answers correct on the exam so that means you're just aiming 50% as the target then obviously this is a low benchmark and 
Just imagine a situation that on a particular exam day, the paper was very easy. So if it is easy, it's easy for everyone, right? And also just imagine that most of the students code around 70 to 75%. So technically your percentile will be lower as compared to the students who scored higher than you, right? So you will definitely fall in the low quartile. So keep your benchmark high and solve as much questions as possible in the exam. And also just to clarify here and also just assume that you got 50% questions right in your first mock paper, then definitely you will get into a comfort zone, which is absolutely not right for the exam. Okay. You will think that you are good to go for the actual exam and perhaps and your preparation will take a hit. Okay. So keep the benchmark high and try to achieve to get 70% right on the mock exam. And before I end this video, let me tell you it's all about time management and understanding the language and the format of the FRM exam. As you all might be aware that you do not have a section wise or topic wise exam on uh, topic wise questions on the exam. You get jumbled up questions in the FRM part one and part two both. Okay, so make sure that you are pretty much familiar with the format of the exam. And finally, guys, if you're not sure about a particular question, go ahead, take a calculative guess, try to eliminate some of the options and then go ahead and take a guesswork. Okay, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much for being with us and thank you so much for your time. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, we're going to be putting out a lot of content for FRM and CFA. So go ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also join our Telegram as well.